This amazing story began many years ago. At that point, Quinton Evans was living in an abandoned trailer, which he'd equipped for his needs. Being a homeless man with an amputated leg, he didn't abuse alcohol and did his best not to stand out among other citizens. Few people knew that Quinton didn't get his injury in some random accident, but in the course of a very difficult military operation in one of the countries of the East. No mission is impossible for the Marine Corps, but the one in which Quinton participated turned out to be just that. Having come under fire, the Marines took up all-round defense and managed to fight off the enemy attack. Unfortunately, when the smoke cleared, it turned out that Sergeant Quinton Evans was badly wounded. Thanks to the smart decision of the unit commander, the wounded infantryman was quickly taken to the hospital where his life was saved. Unfortunately, even though the doctors did everything they could, they failed to save the young hero's left leg. This meant only one thing for Quinton, the end of his hopes of ever returning to his former civilian life, which he'd already grown unaccustomed to. The unfortunate Marine couldn't have known that those weren't the only trials fate had in store for him. Having returned to his hometown in northern Kentucky, Quinton had to face a complete lack of support from his fiance. Some people are unwilling to try to build a life with a disabled person, even a war hero, and Pamela was one of them. She wasn't ready for all the hardships Quinton's injury entailed, so she broke up with him as soon as she found out about his condition. Having ended up all alone with PTSD, Quinton couldn't find his place in life for a long time. There wasn't much work in a small, provincial town, let alone for a disabled person. Clutching the Purple Heart medal in his hand, Quinton cursed fate for being so cruel towards him. The situation was further complicated by the fact that there was no one that could help the young Marine. Quinton's parents passed away at a rather young age, and his ex-fiancé quickly found herself a new boyfriend, someone wealthier and healthier. At some point, the unfortunate man started drinking, which caused even more problems. One day, being drunk and careless, Quinton started a fire, lost his parents' home, and ended up on the street. It was only then that the former Marine realized how quickly he sunk to the very bottom of the social ladder, having found himself on the street with other homeless people and beggars. However, Quinton no longer blamed anyone but himself for all of his problems. Refusing to beg for alms, the young man pulled himself together and quit drinking. At that point, no one really believed that Quinton would ever be able to recover from everything he had to go through. But the former Marine didn't lose heart and little by little got used to his new reality, where he no longer had a fiance, a home, or a job. Quinton quickly mastered the skills of working with electronic devices, having learned how to repair them, which allowed the man to earn his living. Now, whenever Quinton's acquaintances had something broken, they knew where to turn for help. It didn't bring Quinton much money at first, but for a man who had nothing, it felt like a lot. On top of that, Quinton finally mastered the prosthesis and could get around without the crutches and only with the cane. Moreover, thanks to his new line of work, Quinton got to meet the love of his life. By that time, the disabled man had already moved into the trailer which became both his home and his repair shop. On that memorable July morning, Evelyn Dawson brought Quinton a defective iron, which worked like new after the young man replaced the cord. Thank you, you're so talented, the woman whispered, which caused the former Marine to blush with embarrassment. Evelyn and Quinton didn't even realize how they got to talking and felt a connection. It was that meeting in the trailer that marked the beginning of their rapidly developing relationship. Evelyn already had a failed marriage in her past, which ended in a divorce at the initiative of her tyrant husband. Unlike Quinton, the woman had an old house, which she inherited from her late grandmother. Evelyn worked as a cook in a roadside cafe, and being a professional in her field, only prepared wonderful lunches and dinners for Quinton. 
One day, as the young man was on his way to a hardware store to get some spare parts for his repairs, he saw a boy of about seven who stole a bun from the counter and was running away as fast as he could, hoping to hide from the vendor. The distance between the boy and his pursuer was getting smaller by the second, but that's when Quentin intervened. He grabbed the little thief by the hand and pulled the boy towards him. The vendor froze on the spot from surprise. Looking at Quentin in disbelief, he said, You should be on your way. Leave this little thief to me. The kid looked anxiously at the former Marine and realized that he wasn't going to do that. The boy will stay with me. In return, I will reimburse the cost of what he stole, and I'll even pay you a little extra. Quentin answered in a tone that brooked no objections. At that moment, the vendor saw the metal on the Marine's chest and realized that it wasn't worth messing with the poor, lame fellow, who apparently had nothing to lose. Having taken the money offered from the former Marine, the vendor chose to resolve the situation peacefully and left, feeling like a hero. Meanwhile, Quentin took the boy by the hand and asked, Why did you do that, kid? Do you want to end up in prison? That's a tough place to be. The kid sighed sadly and took a bite out of the bun that Quentin had paid for. I'm an orphan. I live in an orphanage, but I run away often when I'm very hungry. My name is Simon, the boy answered, chewing the bun. Quentin nodded in understanding. He knew firsthand what poverty was and understood how difficult Simon's life must have been. At some point, Quentin got a nagging, unsettling feeling. I'm almost 45 and I still don't have children. The man caught himself thinking. Having talked to Simon for a bit, Quentin bought the boy a huge bag of sweets and promised to buy more if he didn't steal. I won't, sir. I promise. Why, why would I steal now when I have so much food? The boy exclaimed joyfully. Quentin patted Simon on the shoulder and limped off to go about his business. However, the man couldn't stop thinking about the little orphan, and later that evening, he told Evelyn about him. Maybe we should adopt him. We're not young anymore. When will we start our family, and will we ever? Quentin suggested during dinner. Evelyn's eyes lit up with joy, and the man realized that he had hit the mark. Few people knew that one of the reasons for her divorce was the fact that they couldn't have children. Most women dream of becoming a mother one day, and Evelyn was no exception. However, she'd been having health problems for several years and knew that she wouldn't be able to have a child on her own. Now that Quentin got his wife's approval, he had only one question to worry about. But how will Simon react to this? To the relief of the former Marine, the boy gladly accepted the offer to become his adopted son. Simon was so tired of the gray walls of the orphanage, poor food and hopeless life, that he was ready to do anything to get adopted by Quentin Evans as soon as possible. It took about two months to get all the paperwork in order, so Quentin used that time to set up a room for Simon in Evelyn's house. Little Simon appreciated the efforts of his adoptive parents and immediately kissed them both. Well, now we have a real family, Quentin said with a smile. He'd been waiting for it for many, many years. Three years flew by. By that time, Simon had already started school, where he had to face social injustice once again. Other children came from wealthy families and immediately noticed that the son of the lame repairman was different from everyone else. Simon never had any pocket money because he meticulously put it into a piggy bank in order to get himself a school uniform. Understanding that his parents would be upset that their son didn't use his lunch money to get something at school, the boy deliberately kept secret the fact that he was saving money for clothes instead of spending at the cafeteria. But that wasn't the only thing that upset Simon, who was bullied by his entire class. Your father is only a one-legged pirate. Where did he lose his leg? And your mother is some cook at the roadside cafeteria. The classmates teased. Trying to protect himself and defend the honor of his parents, Simon often got into fights, but he always lost, because it was always one against many. 
all of that affected the boy's grades, which greatly upset Quentin and Evelyn. Time passed, and the older Simon got, the harder it was for him to be at school. By senior year, he turned into an outcast who was bullied by virtually everyone at school. The boy was ready to quit school at any moment, but his parents always kept him from taking such a drastic step. Simon, on the other hand, had long decided that he wouldn't go to the prom because he didn't have the proper attire. He didn't want to ask his parents for money. By that time, Simon's mother had been seriously ill for three years, and so most of the family income was spent on her treatment. Working for days on end, Quentin tried to improve the family's shaky financial situation, but it was all in vain. When the bank refused to give him a loan, the former Marine fell into a depression. Luck seemed to have turned its back on me yet again, Quentin thought, sadly. The man felt that his family was falling apart and there was no one to come help them. Quentin used all the money the family had left to buy Simon a suit and insisted that his son attend the prom. Don't be afraid of the difficulty, son. Life is often unfair, but you have to stay strong, Quentin said loud and clear like a true Marine. At that moment, Simon felt incredible power in his father's words and decided to attend his prom, despite all the ridicule he knew he'd have to deal with. As expected, he didn't enjoy the prom one bit, but it didn't matter anymore. The young man was glad that his school days were finally over, and he'd be able to start the new stage of his life. But before Simon could apply to a university, his parents were asked to come by the police station. Did our son do something illegal? Tin thought anxiously. But when the couple arrived at the police station, they were in for a big surprise. First of all, Simon didn't do anything wrong. It turned out that some wealthy relatives of his late father were looking for him. According to Barbara and Howard Perez, Simon was their grandson. But our son grew up in an orphanage. This must be some kind of a mistake, Quentin said uncertainly. But the elderly couple stood their ground. As it turned out, they'd already hired a PI to find Simon who'd been living with his adoptive parents for several years now. The thing is, our son David used to date a woman named Megan back in his youth. Their relationship developed quickly and was very passionate, but ended in a painful breakup. It could have been our fault, but it really didn't matter anymore. At the time of the breakup, Megan was already pregnant. Having given birth to a boy eight months later, the woman died of extensive bleeding and Simon ended up in an orphanage. We only learned about it recently when Megan's friend told us, so we decided to find our own grandson. There's more, and it's very painful to talk about. Our son David died in a car accident a year ago, and now we're left without an heir, which is simply unacceptable for us, Barbara Perez explained. Tears welled up in Quentin's eyes at the thought that the couple might take Simon away from him. Don't worry, sir. We're not going to fight for custody of Simon. You've done so much for him, I don't think we'll ever be able to repay you for it. Howard Perez hastened to reassure the former Marine. Quinton relaxed noticeably when he realized that the couple wasn't going to try to take Simon away, but simply wanted to help him find his way in life. A few days later, Simon was already studying at one of the best universities in the country and was getting knowledge that was truly priceless. Throughout his entire time at the university, the young man kept in touch not only with his adoptive parents, but also with his newly found grandparents. Having graduated from the university, Simon took the managing position at one of the firms of Howard Perez, who was glad to see his grandson show interest in the family business. Time flew by, and Simon Evans turned into a true professional and business shark. About 10 years later, he became so successful that he seemed to have even surprised himself. At the same time, Simon got invited to his high school reunion on one of the social media messengers. The reunion was held at a restaurant and all of the young businessman's classmates showed up. Unaware of Simon's success, they all continued to think of him as the disabled Marine's poor son. 
But when the motorcade of expensive cars stopped at the restaurant, none of them could believe their eyes. But that's Simon, Simon Evans. Just look at the beautiful woman he came with. Enjoying everyone's attention, Simon greeted his classmates and ordered a luxurious dinner for them, which consisted of exotic dishes and expensive drinks. At the same time, the young businessman tried not to notice the ingratiating glances of his bullies and thought only about the future, where a successful life was awaiting him. In the midst of the reunion, Simon went up to the impromptu stage and thanked his parents, who were also attending the reunion. Looking at their grown-up son, Evelyn and Quentin couldn't hold back their tears. Only this time, those were tears of joy and not sadness or despair. Having gone through so many difficulties, Evelyn, Quentin, and Simon finally managed to find the family happiness they have always dreamed of.